up guys? This is Jackie, your Salty Crafter, and today we are going to take on Sierra Q's Polymer Clay, which is pretty cheap, and it has four stars, so let's see if we need to dissect it, or if it's acceptable. This week's shoutout goes to the Crafty Little Ninja, whom I actually follow on Instagram as well. If you want a shout out in my next video, don't forget to hashtag Notification Squad within the first 45 minutes of a video's release, or hashtag Nerdy Crafter on Instagram with one of your creations. I have a challenge for you guys! I am challenging you to submit your ugliest created pieces. And I'm saying this, like, don't create something pretty and then send it in. I want you to create the weirdest thing that you can, and I'm going to feature them and make commentaries on them. So please make sure that when you're submitting, you are sure that this is going to be salty crafter style commentary and not necessarily a nice review. So if you want to do that, you're going to send it to saltycrafter at gmail.com or the hashtag ugly with an E, Palmer Clay, on Instagram. So as you can see here, this little guy was created in a live stream and uh, it is absolutely atrocious. It has its charm, but you know, it's, uh, it's quite the thing. I don't know what you guys were on during the live stream, but this is what you asked me to do. This product was actually recommended to me on Amazon and it is pretty cheap. I don't know why the Canadian version went absolutely ridiculous. I bought it for $16. At Canadian and when I checked today it was actually $54 which makes no sense whatsoever so that is, that is getting me pretty salty already I have no idea what colors are in there but just looking at the front these are holy neon colors oh wow that is that is vibrant that is really vibrant it's looking a little plasticky in terms of the color but let's take them out and look at them. We have kind of a purple, green, black, a fleshy tone, and then some super, super vibrant colors in between. It seems like a really good selection of color, but I just kind of touched it and it has like this wet feel to it. So we're getting about 24 colors, which means that every block should be more or less about 63 cents, but we're getting small blocks. I'm really curious how how heavy each piece is. So to do that, I brought a scale. Normally a two ounce bar, which is standard for polymer clay, is about $2.50 if you get it at the right price and not the overly inflated price of Michael's. So I'm curious. So two ounces are about 57 grams. Let's see how many grams this little guy is. So it is 14 grams. Let's let's do a little math over here. So if we have 56 grams divided by 14 equals 4. So we can fit four of these guys into a normal block of clay. So remember this is thicker and longer. Get your heads out of the gutter. So this is literally four times the actual size of this little guy. And we're talking about each piece being about 63 cents. So if we were to do 63 cents times four, each block is actually approximately the same price as an actual block of polymer clay. So is it actually a cheaper, cheap, cheap, <laughs> is it actually a cheaper alternative? The answer is no, actually, surprisingly. I honestly thought this would be way more cheap as an alternative and that's why I bought it because I was like oh my gosh this is so much cheaper I thought this would be one ounce per block and not 14 grams <sighs> guys I am genuinely upset right now because I really thought this would be a genuine like genuine 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 can I say genuine more times because I honestly thought this would be a great cheap alternative to polymer clay sculpey or Fibo or whatever I didn't know it was so light, so price is not a factor. All right, so let's grab one of the colors. I'm going to take black because why not? And I did say that the texture felt a little wet. You know when you put a little too much of baby oil inside your hard clay, it has this sticky feeling to it, which I don't really mind, but if you don't like this sticky feeling, which doesn't stay too long, so it's not too bothersome, but you do get a little bit of an oily an oily feel. And just by holding it, it does have a bit of resistance, but it's... Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, color. How you doing there, buddy? Yeah, so 
it should be soft, which it actually isn't too bad in terms of how soft it is. So just to give you an idea, yeah, this is, um, this could potentially be a problem if you want to use white. You know what? Let's use white. This white looks so untainted. I am going to taint this white now. Are you ready? I'm going to take a little piece because I don't want to ruin everything so you guys don't tell me I'm wasting stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to, you know, knead it because... I want it. Oh, this is really soft. As you can see here, the colors do transfer to one another. I'm curious if it's just the black. Oh, yeah, you see? So I'm just kind of <laughs> showing you guys that the color is um, leaky. This, this sticky texture is just so weird. I want to see what it's going to be like once I start crafting with it. Let's take my best friend, red. So right away, you can see that most colors seem to come off in your hands. Now don't get me wrong, Sculpey is not without fault. Red, when it comes to Sculpey, does come out in your hands and some tones of green. Not all of them, but some of them. But the black I've never had issues with when it came to my other kinds of clay, so I'm really surprised. So essentially, red, blues, and blacks are going to be the colors that kind of wash off in your hand. Interestingly enough, browns, pinks, yellows, and purples seem to be fine. Now, is it easy to make colors? Let's find out. It was actually really easy to mix together, so I really have to admit, I am loving the softness of this clay, but its stickiness is still something I'm not, I'm not used to. I'm not used to, if you see what that me. Get up! Get up! So this is what I'm going to be testing with. Because of its stick... Because of its stickiness level, it's going to stick to other pieces. I am being super aggro. <laughs> I am... I'm genuinely trying to get it off my hand right now. It's starting to come off. Look at that. It's starting to. Come on. There you go. Shakeability is pretty good. Not that shakeability is actually a factor in buying clay, but if you wanted to know, you know. I'm going to bake this piece according to the package instructions because I'm extremely curious. Yeah, it's sticky. Because <laughs> I'm extremely curious. Yeah, the stickiness. Because I'm really curious to know what it's going to look like, if it's going to maintain that kind of shine, or if it's going to be bendy, or if it's going to be crumbly. So we need to know the behavior of it once it actually bakes. The package instructions clearly say that you need to bake between 248 and 266 Fahrenheit. However, I'm not sure if I have the correct time here because we have minutes, not my nights. So I'm going to try for minutes and see if that's the same as my nights. Of all the creatures on this box, my favorite is this guy. Okay, so here it is baked and I want to show you guys that it is actually still shiny, which is really interesting. Here, let me show you. So, I know you can't see, there you go. So you can see, yeah, there's my fingerprint on there. You can see it has this kind of shine to it, which is very reflective. Whoa, and there's an actual piece of polymer clay which is Sculpey and as you can see no reflection none whatsoever so this is really neat if you like your pieces super shiny see that the black one is Sculpey and the purple one is the Sierra Q you can see it's actually pretty reflective another thing I wanted to test is how bendable is it? So Sculpey isn't bendable. It didn't take that much pressure for me to break it, even though I baked it for a long time. CRQ. Oh, what? No way. No way. Oh my gosh, this is way bendier. Oh, what? Let's see how far we can bend it before it breaks. Okay, it is really flexible. So if you guys don't know what that means, is that when clay is flexible, just like this one here, that means it's stronger. So the bendability actually makes it way more endurant and l a lot less likely to break. So I'm, I'm, pushing, I'm pushing the boundaries here. So this actually is really bendable. I think that is really neat. Let's make something with this. I decided to go with a Valentine's Day theme because I haven't made anything Valentine's in a long time. And is that color on my desk? Well, yes it is. So be careful, keep your desk safe because this clay does release its color. And of course, its stickiness was still there, so my fingerprints and cat hair and all that stuff got onto it. So clean it up with rubbing alcohol and Q-tip when needed. 
Again, the stickiness came into play because I wanted the water area to be underneath the grass, and I realized that after, and as I was trying to remove it, the clay was like, oh, heck no. So I couldn't remove it, and it was permanent, otherwise I would have broken the clay. So I decided to put the water on the outside. For those of you who don't want to use resin, this is another cute way to actually make a water effect without needing that scary epoxy that everyone's scared of. How do you feel about Valentine's Day? As a kid and even as a teenager, I really loved Valentine's Day just because it doesn't have to be an actual relationship. It could just be a friendship or even your family members to show them how much you care. Now, I know a lot of you will say, well, I don't want a, re a reason or a specific day to show my care. But, you know, sometimes an excuse is good. And I used to exchange cards with my friends, uh, even though sometimes they weren't my friends. I still exchange cards with them because why not? Ah, stickiness again. Because of that stickiness, the clay pretty much was like, I like dust. I like fingerprints. So you have to be very vigilant in removing them as often as you can, otherwise they get into crevices you cannot clean. The heart in the back was pre-baked for about 20 minutes so that it could stay up while baking. I also wanted to test if this clay was compatible with liquid Sculpey in case you wanted to make some kind of cream or glaze or frosting. And the answer is, it is compatible. As you can see, once it was baked, the heart fell off. So we're going to glue that later on with a little bit of glue gun. Now let's paint on the details. Here you have it, an absolutely adorable bunny hill. The idea behind this was just to have two little bunnies cuddling. They could be friends, they could be significant others. The important thing is, is that they're just taking time to cuddle and love each other. Okay, this is really interesting because I have the same amount of pros as I do cons, but since you guys know what show this is, let's start with the cons. The first one is the price. Because it varies so much from Canadian to US, each block technically would end up being $1.66 US. I've seen polymer clay like Sculpey and Fimo for that price online on American sites. So if you're patient and looking for sales, you can definitely find them for that price. For us Canadians, it's about $2.50 per block if it were the same size, which means that it's pretty much the same price as a known brand like Fimo and Sculpey. Er, me, gird. Stickiness level? To the max. I don't think I've ever had clay this sticky before and it's kind of like honey. You really got to almost shake it off vigorously, very vigorously. And you can see here, I even tried to hold the bunny very, very gently and my finger got stuck on the face and I couldn't remove it until I was kind of like wriggling it out. So it, it made this impression which causes more fingerprints and dust sticks to it and it almost becomes part of the clay. So you have to keep your place very clean or really kind of just be very, very careful. Now the next one is also because of the stickiness. So this is my, my third, my third annoyance, is that because it's sticky, you can't do proper details. What ends up happening is that you're trying to hover pieces over the other just to get your position right, and it just gets sucked in, and it gets, it, it just, the stickiness really makes detail really hard. You guys saw this one, and it's about the colors coming off on your finger. Colors do come off way more easily than the other brands I've tried. I didn't expect this con, but it was about the heart. Now, because it does become flexible, what ends up happening is when you rebake it, it kind of gets flexible again, so slimmer pieces might not keep their shape if you put them vertical. So usually when you rebake something with a uh, Sculpey, what ends up happening is they, they, it just stays stiff. So when you rebake it, it stays like that. But this one became extremely flexible, which was really cool because you could do some really fun effects. But when it comes to baking, it'll probably fall like it did on mine. Another con is that because this comes in a set, if you want different colors because you ran out of it quickly and you know that you like this kind of color, you can't buy it individually, so that's another one. Another thing which I debated putting it as a con is that this on Amazon shows that it's supposed to come with a pouch so that I can store it, but nowhere is there a pouch that came with it. So we have the instructional, instructional, and then the, the colors, and that's about it. So pouch, where are you? 
Something that was not on the packaging was that this clay could actually be boiled. So that was only mentioned on the Amazon posting. So what I did is I boiled water first, put the piece inside and then took it off the element and let it for about 20 minutes. What I would suggest is actually boiling the water and then keeping it on the lowest possible setting and keeping it for about 20 minutes. So the water boiled and then I took it off of the element and it's been in there for about 20 minutes. So this is what it looks like and yes, it does work. So if you're going to boil it, make sure that you do follow the, oh, actually, nope, never mind. Boiling is, it's a little fragile, it seems. I didn't even push it that hard, so I highly recommend that you bake your clay. But at least if you did want to boil it, you have that option. Just make sure the water is warmer for a little longer. Now for the pros, which I am actually genuinely happy that there are, because I really wanted to give you guys this as an option to be able to buy. So if you want to buy it, now you know both pros and cons. Flexibility. That is really awesome because when it's flexible, it is less likely to break. The colors are so vibrant. It really has this kind of childish cartoony look and they're super saturated, so that's absolutely gorgeous. Non-toxic. So for those of you who are defending Model Magic because you're saying it's non-toxic and for kids, there you go. This could be a pro or con, but it does bake somewhat shiny, kind of like a matte plastic, but it still has like this little sheen to it. So it depends on the effect you want, but you do get a little bit of a shine. Easily painted and blended. I really enjoyed the fact that it was super easy to work with right away from the package, so it was soft but I wonder if the stickiness is a product of the softness. Lastly, this is great for young beginners or people who aren't sure if they would like polymer clay. It's, you really can't do too much detail work, so think of it as an entry level kind of clay. And also, it is compatible with liquid Sculpey if you wanted to make icing. So you can see that the color is pretty vibrant. You totally will be able to cross use it with your other clay kind of products. Why did I lose my words? <laughs> Overall, I am pretty pleased with this product and I would give it seven and a half on 10 dorks. Is it worth buying? That is entirely up to you. You know both pros and cons, so you know what to look for. If you have another product you want me to salty review, leave it in the comment section below. Until then, I will see you guys in the next video.